Today, Millie has come in to be spayed. Now, it's a routine procedure, uh, something that we do commonly here at Charter Vets, but this is usually what most of you clients see, just the consult room, and you don't know what happens after this point. Today, we just want to give you a step-by-step -step guide to what happens after this point, and talk you through the operation. The first place patients will go after leaving the consult room is the prep room. Here smaller patients like Millie are put on top of the table and they'll have an intravenous catheter placed. The intravenous catheter is used by us to deliver drugs to Millie but it's also there should we need to deliver fluids at any time. We see it as an essential part of a safe anaesthetic and take pride that all our patients at Charter receive an intravenous catheter if they are having an anaesthetic. Despite being the gold standard, this is not something which is done in all veterinary practices. Here we just see Amy secure the catheter. She'll then flush it with saline to make sure it is in place and flowing well. After this, we give Millie a pre-med. This is a combination of drugs designed to make the induction of anesthesia smooth and to help with pain relief. Once these drugs are on board, Millie can go back to her kennel and let the drugs take effect. Some 15 minutes later, we are ready to induce anesthesia. A short-acting anesthetic agent is injected slowly intravenously. As we give this, we monitor Millie. She'll gradually become heavy in Nicola's hands, and we let her slowly down onto the table. The purpose of the induction is to allow us to then pass a tube down Millie's windpipe. Having this tube in place allows us to deliver oxygen and anaesthetic agents and it is these which will keep Millie asleep throughout the procedure. The tube also ensures that we have a safe and protected access to the airway, again essential for anaesthetic safety. Millie has now been attached to the breathing circuit. She's also been attached to advanced monitoring equipment. This equipment can monitor the oxygen levels in the blood, the respiration rate and the heart rate. So we are not entirely reliant on machinery. Nicola does keep a close eye on Millie herself also. Once we are happy that Millie is in a safe and stable plane of anesthesia, we clip the hair away from around the site we'll be operating on. This is done so we can thoroughly clean and prepare the skin and thus massively reduce the risk of infection at the time of surgery. We also, of course, try and keep things as neat as possible. Millie's legs have been wrapped in bubble wrap. This is because small patients like Millie have an increased risk of becoming hypothermic during surgery. This simple step can reduce this. Millie has now been moved through into the operating theatre. And whilst Nicola closely monitors the anaesthetic, the vet begins the process of scrubbing up. This process is a very thorough one and ensures that the hands and arms are as clean as possible before surgery. Just part of the process is shown here. The vet then moves into theatre, where he'll put on a single-use sterile gown. As well as this, you'll see the vet has put on a single-use mask and a surgical cap. They will have also changed their shoes before entering the theatre. Although you'll have seen the vet scrubbing up, we still put on a pair of surgical gloves for every single operation at Charter Vets. These are single use. Millie's skin would have already been cleaned out in the prep room, but in theatre it receives a final surgical prep. Again, just part of the process is shown here. With the skin prep complete, we now apply the drape. This is a single-use surgical drape. In the operating theatre, we enjoy the use of even more advanced monitoring equipment. An esophageal probe can give information about the heart's rate and rhythm. We can also monitor the gases expired by Millie. 
but you'll see, again, Nicola always checks things manually, just so we aren't reliant on machinery. Happy that Millie is in a stable and safe plane of anesthesia, we can think towards starting surgery. The first step is to make a small incision through the disposable drape. This is followed by a skin incision with a scalpel blade. Once the small incision is made with a scalpel blade, scissors are used to part the fat below the skin and to get down to the muscle layers. We use a process called blunt dissection. This is where the scissors are opened and it is this that parts the tissue rather than using them in a cutting manner. Once we're down to the muscle layers, we find the midpoint. We pull this up away from abdominal organs and use a scalpel blade to make a small nick into the abdomen. This is then extended slightly using scissors. At this point, any small skin vessels which might be bleeding can be cauterized using diathermy. This improves visibility in the surgery. Now we are in the abdomen, we locate the uterus. This is done by using two pairs of forceps as shown. You can see that in young small dogs, the uterus is a very small organ, about the width of the pipe cleaner in this case. The uterus is a Y-shaped organ. It has two limbs to it. We are just dealing with one limb here. At the end of each limb, the ovary is located, shown here. Clamps are then passed between the ovary and the body wall. They are fixed onto this tissue, which we call the ovarian pedicle. In all, three clamps are placed. They all have different jobs. One of the clamps is just to crush the tissue, and it is in this crush which we can then suture. Crushing the tissue first means that this suture will sit down nicely and be more fixed. Tension is applied to the ligature to make sure that the ovarian artery is securely tied off. At this point, scissors are used to cut between the two remaining clamps, and this frees the ovary from the body wall. We keep hold of the ovarian pedicle, or stump, to ensure that we are happy with the ligature before releasing it down into the abdomen. We pick up the surgery after the same process has happened to both left and right uterine horns. Here you can clearly see the Y shape of the uterus. In a spay operation, the ovaries and the uterus are removed. This means we do need to tie off the uterus at the level just above the cervix. Again, clamps are used. After clamping the tissue, another ligature is firmly placed to seal off the blood vessels here. With the ligature in place, a second pair of clamps is placed above the first pair. It is between these two clamps that the uterus will be sectioned. The uterus and ovaries have now been removed, and all that is left to do is to close up the incision. First of all, the muscle layers are closed. This is done using the same long-lasting but dissolvable suture material that was used to tie off the ovary and the uterus. Before it is completely closed, we apply local anesthetic to the operation site and this should make for a much more comfortable recovery. Although minimal in Millie, the next layer to close is the fat. We use a slightly different dissolvable suture material here. Finally, using the same dissolvable suture material, we close the skin. At Charter Vets, we use a pattern called the intradermal pattern. 
This means there will be no stitches on the surface of the skin. Not only does this look nice, but more importantly, our patients don't have stitches to lick and nibble at, and this greatly reduces the risk of post-operative infection. Here the final knot has been placed, and we just need to bury it now. The needle is placed back into the subcutaneous tissue, and once this is pulled through, the knot should disappear. Well, that is the spay procedure. Once the drape is removed and Millie has been cleaned up, she can go back to her kennel. With high levels of pain relief on board, Millie should enjoy a comfortable and pain-free recovery.